Hi everyone, this is April Cox, really excited to move forward with this episode of Self-Publishing Made Simple, our author work group. We have special guest speaker today, Brian Meeks, on the topic of analyzing and adjusting Amazon ads for maximum performance. This is a fantastic topic and I am so, so happy to have Brian with us here today. Welcome, Brian. Well, thank you. I'm pleased to be here. I think this is the second time. Well, I have to begin by apologizing. I missed our last scheduled appointment. I just was taking a nap and I'd forgotten that it was the day. So <laughs> anybody that showed up for that one and missed it, I am truly sorry, but I will be extra entertaining today. Yeah. Um, I love that picture of me. I love it because, you know, I had the one with you in the fancy hat yeah. and then I said, you know what, I like the Brian that's just like, just lounging at the, you know, drinking a cup of coffee or whatever's in the, in the cup, you don't have to tell us, um, well, but I, well, yeah. <laughs> those that recognize the copper cup will know that that's a Moscow mule. Oh, okay. Now well, I love it. I love it. And and we have um, Brian, who you know many of you know as the the master genius wh who's written the Amazon uh, mastering Amazon ads and mastering Amazon descriptions. I feel like as an author, those were a couple of the go-to books that I got started with when um, I before I started with Amazon ads. Um, and it's always being recommended. It's an awesome read. Yeah, I've sold $250,000 worth of fiction. So yeah. I sold a lot of books, but I, I don't want to take credit so, for something that uh, <laughs> has been done. But the reason I've sold so many books is because of my skills as a data analyst and using those skills to run ads. All right. Well, so and you've got multiple genres currently that you um, have have released books in, Brian. Uh, what what genres are you currently working in, and and that you've covered so? Well, I I'm currently writing a ten book epic fantasy series called Chronicles of the Fifth Kingdom. I'm doing a ten month rapid release, so ten books over ten months. The fourth is coming out this month, fifth next month, and so on and so forth. I've completed books I've completed through six so I've got a little bit of a cushion I'm working on seven right now in addition I have prior to I took a couple of years when I was doing mastering Amazon ads and mastering Amazon descriptions and focused entirely on nonfiction prior to that I have a, a detective series a satire series a space opera trilogy a couple young adults and a thriller that may become a series one day if I ever ever get around to it. So wow. I I would make more money if I had just written books in the Henry Wood Detective series because if you have a long series, people that like it just stay with it. But I don't know that I would enjoy writing as much if I were working on the 19th book in the Henry Wood series instead of the seventh book in the fan in the epic fantasy series. So that's nice. why I, again, it's, it's not necessarily business move. It's a make myself happy move. Right. Right. Tell me, you know, generally what's, um, how important are Amazon ads and, um, you know, kind of a, as a general overview from a marketing perspective, how much should the, you know, should they take up of our time and effort as a new author or re when releasing a new book? Well, that's, that's a very good question in that the answer is different when, anyway, you're, the question, when you add to it new authors, changes a bit differently. I would say that Amazon ads or, uh, I mean, there's certainly other venues, Book Club and, and Facebook, are critical to an author's success. That being said, if one is a new author and 
depending on their plan for production. If, if a new author is doing, like I'm doing with this epic fantasy series, where they're writing every single day, they plan to write 10 books over the course of a year, that is different than an author who maybe is new and will produce one book a year. And this is an important distinction because if you're new and you don't have any sort of uh, readership, then it will be a challenge to run ads on any platform profitably for a single book, even if it's priced at what I consider to be full price, $4.99, because you have limited margin. Now, this is an important point. I, I'm, I'm not stressing that you should try to write 10 books in a year. It's, it's not something I would have tried in 2010 when I began as an author because there were so many things to learn about this business that I didn't have, I had to spend energy learning, which is why everyone's here today is learning about Amazon ad. But once you know some of that stuff and you can turn your energy just to writing, it becomes easier to produce more books in a year. So don't, don't, I don't want anybody to be discouraged and think, oh, I have to write that many books. I have a very good friend who produces one book every nine months and she's making six figures a year. She's only got four books out. She's done that over about three and a half years. And so it is entirely possible to start out moving a little bit more slowly and then speed up over time. Now, back to the Amazon ads. If you've only got one book and you don't think you'll have another book for a year, you might be best served to just focus on writing because while we all want that first book to do great, the realities are once you have a second book and a third book, it's easier from a marketing perspective because of something called read through. Read through is simply a person buys your first book and they enjoy it. So then they go read the second book and the third book, but you don't have to pay for more clicks on AMS ads to get those second and third reads because they're reading through, which means your margin is higher. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. And so it, it's, that was, that was a really long answer, but I want people listening to understand that some of you may only have one book, and well, it's always a good idea to maybe dip your toes into AMS so you can learn, learn about it. It'll be more of a challenge to make a profit and you may have to, to move really slowly in the sense that we're, we're going to talk about setting up the ads and one of the challenges is scaling. So, yeah, we'll just we'll just come back to that, and okay. I'll, I'll I'll give a suggestion for people that maybe just have one book. You can run some ads and bid really low, or find the keywords that don't cost as much. You won't get as much traffic. It won't drive a ton of sales. You won't get rich by any means, but it will keep people occasionally trickling in. And if you're doing it at a low enough cost per click, you could still make a profit with just the one book. And so I want people to understand they should always keep an eye on profitability because the goal isn't to sell books and lose money. Right. The, the, the goal is to make money so that you can pay for more editing, and more covers, and all that stuff. So. Now, Brian, when, when we're first starting out, I've heard kind of conflicting information. At first, they tell us, when you first set up your ad, leave it alone because it's not going to do much. And if you start yes. playing around with it, it's going to cause issues and it's, it's not going to be as effective. So could you comment on that? You know, on beginning Absolutely. ads? Absolutely. The, the, one of the, one of the issues with AMS ads is that some ads never turn off. And I want, want people to understand that when you get to a point where you found a bid that works well for you, 
all ads die. So you, your ad may have been running along nicely for three weeks, maybe a month, month and a half. And then all of a sudden it dies. Well, that's natural. That They all die at some point, unless you have grotesquely overbid. If you want to bid a dollar a click, that ad will run for a long, long time. But you better have a dozen books in your series with great read through because you'll lose money. That being said, if you're bidding correctly and finding sort of that sweet spot, then your ad should die. It, it should die, you know, after five, six weeks. It may die after two weeks. It's completely natural, no need to panic. And what we do at that point is we don't try to keep that single ad running. These are not your children. They're, 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 don't fall in love with an ad. You just terminate it and write a new ad. So I want you to imagine you've written an ad, it gets 100,000 impressions, does pretty well, then it dies. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Kill and when it, you, write a new when ad. When you say dies, it just, what, stops getting impressions? Yeah, so, so let's say you have an ad that's getting 20,000 impressions a day for five days, and then it drops to 1,000. It has died. Mm -hmm. That's fine. That absolutely happens. Kill it and write a new ad. I always advise people not to use the copy button because that's only saving you 90 seconds. And until you've written thousands and thousands of ads, you need the practice at copywriting. So I encourage people, they don't listen to me. They use the copy button and over and over. I had a guy who, well, do you, do, you know what? Let's, let's just set up an ad. How does that sound? Let's that set sounds up an wonderful. Ad and, and I'll walk through the, the basics and then touch on these things as we get to them. So that sounds wonderful. Thank I'm, you. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. So when you go to start an ad, can, can you see my screen? Is it the screen sharing? Do you see? Yes. Yep. I see it. Choose, choose your campaign type. Yes. Let's start with this sponsored products and lock screen ads. We're going to focus mostly on sponsored products because that's what everybody loves to run. Lock screen ads used to be called product display interest ads. I have spent over $45,000 on product display interest ads. They have become, since they changed them to lock screen ads, I'm not seeing the same results. And so I want your, your folks to focus on sponsored products. So here's the thing, we click continue, pretty simple. Now we need to pick a campaign name. At this point, if you folks are out there are listening, but you're also watching Facebook or you're playing with your cat, pay attention right now and take notes because Th this is important campaign name. You want to, it will make your life moving forward easier if you have a naming convention. And that is simply a way that you name your ads all the time that prevents you from having the same name twice. You don't want that. But also gives you a little information. So I'm going to run an ad for Henry Wood Detective Agency. I'm going to run it for the first book in the series. So I start all those ads with HWDA, Henry Wood Detective Agency. Then, and this will be my first ad that I'm running for uh, Henry Wood Detective Agency in September. Uh, so we will go Henry Wood Detective Agency, APT, 2019. And then I'm going to do auto targeting. So auto. And uh, I'm going to bid 0 0.30. So I can then look at this ad, the name, and I have some good information, which when mm -hmm. you're new to this, you'll only have a handful of ads and you'll remember all this stuff. When you have written hundreds of ads, it will be really handy to take the extra step to put in some information. Oh, there's one other thing I do, and I left it out, A. And A just simply tells me that this is the first ad that I've run for Henry Wood Detective Agency in September. Okay. 
So the I'm not going to put in okay portfolio. The you can group ads together. Uh, th that is something that is. It's just muddying the water for your new folks right now. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Uh, it, it's a handy feature, but you know, let's, let's just do no portfolio when you're a beginner. Okay. I don't put an end date on it. My daily budget, I'm going to do $50. Now, I know from experience that at 30 cents, I'm not going to spend much of that budget. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried about that. If it should spend the whole budget at 30 cents, I know because of my read through that this book converts at about one in eight. So I'll spend $2 and 40 cents. I know with the read through revenue that a new reader is worth around seven or $8. So this will be profitable. Uh, if any of your readers don't understand what read through is, I can explain that later they can leave a comment or what have you so we got a name we got their daily budget if you're new start with ten dollars start with five dollars don't you don't need 50 this is just the way i run my ads so i hope that's clear that yep that, that I, can i just interrupt for one second with you absolutely regard, may with regard to the the you started at 30 cents is that something that you just know that that's a good one for your specific books uh, yes. I, i've seen so many different you know, start at eight cents, six cents, 14 cents, you know, there's so many Absolutely. different words out there about, or advice about where to begin. It, this is absolutely a number based on what I know of my data and for everyone else. And this is, that was a great question. You should start low with the expectation that the first set of ads will maybe never turn on. And that's okay. In fact, in the last three weeks, a woman that's in my class reached out to me and she said, I, I did, as you asked, I started my first set of ads. She ran three or four ads. I think it was four. She bid the, the suggested bid. And I think we started, we had an ad at 16 cents. We had another one for her box set at 18 cents, uh, one at 20 and then I just don't remember what the fourth one was, but, but we came up with a mix of automatic targeting, manual targeting, which we're going to show you in a moment and a couple different bid points. The idea being is with the first set, you want to start out low to see if they turn on. And if they don't, you then kill those ads. And when I say turn on, I, I would give them a week and she did. And after a week, there were very few impressions. So we terminated all of them. She ran another set for the same first book in series, same combination of auto targeting, manual targeting, and her box set. And we upped the bids by a couple sets. In the second week, her ad that was at 26 cents uh, in the first day got 26,000 impressions, which was more than the first four ads had gotten over an entire week. So she found her sweet spot very early on. Every genre is different. If you're, I know a woman who writes books and nonfiction teaching people how to play the ukulele. Her cost per click is really low because there aren't that many ukulele instructional books competing for clicks. So everyone will have to find their own, uh, their own bid. Does, does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. Now I'm going to do, auto targeting on this one because the first ad is very well you want the first one to be easy auto targeting they pick your keywords okay now this section here this is another section where if you stop paying attention and you're looking at cat pictures on Facebook focus on this this is there's three choices dynamic bid down will lower your bids in real time when your ad may be less likely to convert to a sale. Okay, first off, I struggle to believe that they know that there's a, a time when conversions change. I've never seen conversion rates change at different times 
that, that seems unlikely to me because how, how do they know before an event happens? So before some, somebody's fingers over the mouse and they, they're, they're about to click and Amazon is saying that before anything happens, they know it's less likely to convert. That, that doesn't make sense to me, but regardless, uh, any campaign, oh, that's not important. Dynamic bid down. So you, you do a bid and they will potentially lower your bid. Dynamic bid up and down. Don't use this. Okay. The middle one, just everybody write that down. Don't use it. Um, Patty, Karina, Haley, I can't see the name of the bottom person, but um, Audrey, Megan, iPhone, all of you folks, don't use that because what that means will raise your bid by a maximum of 100% in real time when your ad may be more likely to convert to a sale and lower your bids when less likely to convert to a sale. This is the reason that ads, the cost per click have skyrocketed because most people are so worried about, oh, will the ad turn on? Mm -hmm. that they just want it to work and they don't care about the fact that if you're bidding 30 cents, like I did here, they're saying, oh, well, we'll just raise it by up to a hundred percent. So they're going to raise it to 60 cents if they yeah. feel like it. Well, it's 60 cents. I mean, that's a big difference. There's a lot of people that can't make a profit at 60 cents. Mm -hmm. This book might make a slight profit, but I don't want them doing that because what I've just told you, you start low, you put in a bid. If it doesn't work, the next ad you run should be 32 cents. So if this one doesn't work at 30, then I'll run another ad at 32 cents. I'm not going to go straight to 60 because the sweet spot is, it is very unlikely to be all the way to 60 cents. You're going to lose a ton of money if you use dynamic bid down. You'll probably also gain 30 pounds and your children will stop loving you. So don't use dynamic bid up and down, no matter what. Fixed bids, this is good too. I like the fixed bid. Um, the, you know what you're getting. The, I, 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 I use fixed bid sometimes, dynamic bid sometimes in an effort to try to understand if one, one is superior. I, I, I say test it out. I haven't found anything conclusive. So I'm not gonna recommend one or the other, but now adjust bids by placement. This is another terrible thing. Top search first page. Okay, I know, I, I mean, we've barely gotten into the ad and I'm throwing a ton at you folks, but I want you to understand that this is just another way to bleed money. I'm gonna take a moment, I'm gonna grab Grab Amazon here. So this is Dragon's Fury, my, uh, my new epic fantasy. We'll scroll down here to some ads. These are also bots. They're, they're not paid for. These are sponsored products related to this item. So all of these are ads. If I click on any of these books, this person will have to pay for the click. Now, Michael Adelaide, I'm not going to click on this book because he lives in the same building as me. He's actually four floors up and I don't want to make him pay for a click. Now, to get this first spot though, is very expensive. Now, it may not be expensive if you're bidding on Brian Meeks, but if they got here through Dragon or Epic Fantasy, different keywords can end up in the same place. And so, no idea what this will cost me if I click. But these early ones are all probably pretty expensive. Now, here's a concept you're probably not, not going to hear other places. Don't worry about being on that front page. I know that goes against conventional marketing wisdom, but if, and this I see this a lot in romance and in smaller niches, if there's one or two authors that are overbidding, then their books will show up in this first spot all the time, which initially is probably great for sales. But now I want you to think from the point of the view of the reader, and I hope this concept will stay with you. 
if I'm a reader and I consume a lot of romance books, then the chances are at some point, those first two, three, four, maybe the whole first page, I've already read. So that means that now this page is no longer of interest. I'm, I'm, romance readers consume five, six books a week. So if they've read all of the books on this first page, paying to be on that first page is expensive, they probably go to the second page. So it's not nearly as expensive. These clicks, because they're further down, and maybe the third page, they're not going to cost nearly as much. So going back to here, spending money to try, excuse me. <coughs> oh, sorry. Sometimes you have to sneeze. Spending money to try to land on that page will likely be so expensive you won't make a profit. And it may not be as valuable as perceived. I, does that make sense? Oh, yes. I, oh, yep. good. Okay, okay. Um, so we're going to do dynamic bid down. We're not going to increase our bid to try to land on the first page. Custom text ad, standard ad. The standard ad is simply one without any text. Custom text ad allows to add text. I want to add some text to my ad for Henry Wood Detective Agency. And so let's, let's continue on. Now, product, you have to pick your book. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to add Henry Wood Detective Agency here. I will then go automatic targeting, suggested bid. They're suggesting I bid 80 cents. Well, 80 cents would cost me about 640 to get a new reader. That's, that's going to be break even at best. The default is 75. I'm putting in 30. Don't feel like you have to listen to this. Mm -hmm. That is, that is a lot of people, especially new people that are starting out that don't know what to do. Their first few ads, they just follow and take Amazon suggestions and they get crushed. They absolutely lose a ton of money. Okay, so um, we need to write some text. Henry loves a challenge. But will this new case and his new client get him killed? Okay. There we go. That, I mean, it, it can be whatever. I, I do a lot of copywriting. This is an okay copy. At this point, new authors to AMS ads will sometimes be pretty stressed out about their first copy. Don't, don't worry about it. The copy here just gets them to click. And while you want it to be as good as possible, we only pay for the click. So if you have bad copy, you don't get that many clicks, that's okay. You'll just write a, a new ad. You'll be fine. But let's, let's try another bit of copy. Um, games could be trouble. Will this one get Henry in over his head with Tommy the knife? He, uh, games can be trouble. Yeah, there you go. So again, I don't know which one would be better, but it's not that important to stress out about it. So there, we've got our bet. We've got our default bid, and we are ready to submit. And that's it. That is all you do to launch a campaign. I'm going to hit launch, and then we're going to write another one. We'll go to campaign manager, and we will create campaign. Ryan, I noticed that you skipped over end date. Um, and I had heard from uh, others that having an end date sometimes helps Amazon pay attention to your ad. Uh, do you agree with that? Or have you, have you, I have that? not seen any mathematical data to support that, but if somebody has told you that and they would like to share their data, 
there's statistically significant data that shows uh, a difference. Mm -hmm. I think I, I just I, I believe in statistically significant data, and I haven't seen that. But uh, you know what? If you you could certainly put an end date in there and see how that works. You know, test it out. Understand though that to draw a conclusion, you're going to want to have, say, 100 ads with, 100 ads without, 20 or 30 million impressions in each group. Uh, well, no, with 100 ads, you probably want, yeah, um, 30 or 40 million impressions in each group. And then you'll have enough data to compare. Mm -hmm. I don't think most people are patient enough to do that sort of analysis. Right. Now, that, that's, that's what I do. I've had my own ads. I've had over 100 million impressions. I've had 600,000 clicks last time I looked. I had a client last year. We pushed him over 100 million on a couple thousand ads. So when I study something, I have statistically significant data. If you run an ad, and do it one way and then run a second ad and do another way and one outperforms the other, you can't draw a conclusion that it was because you clicked end date. I see. I hope that makes sense to folks. Yeah. Uh, it, people draw conclusions without really understanding statistical significance. Um, anyway, we're going to run another ad really quickly because we want to show the ad that most people use, Henry Wood Detective Agency, and this is September. One nine, and this is ad B, and this will be manual. And we're going to bid, we'll bid 32 cents on this one just to be different. And you know what? We'll put in an end date. Why not? Let's, uh, let's do an end date of December 31st. Daily budget. We'll do $20 on this one. Uh, you know what? Now I, I always do 50. Um, okay. Manual targeting. Oh, uh, any, any, yeah, do we have any questions? That's fine. Yeah, I was just going to say, we do have one question from Megan asking, uh, I think it's about whether the daily budget and the bid are connected. She's saying if you start at $5 daily, how many cents bid would make sense? I, I don't know that those two are connected, but I want to let you reply. What, yeah, I, the, they're not connected. The, the, if, if you bid a dollar a click and you have a budget of five dollars, you'll maybe get five to seven clicks probably coming in at 75 cents a click and that's probably not enough to get a sale or a new reader. So you can think in terms of what am I hoping for per day uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is a good idea to sort of understand that at $5 a day, that may not be enough to yield a new reader. Um, again, it depends. If you're getting, if you're writing ukulele books and you're getting uh, you know, really low cost per click, then $5 might get you 30 clicks, 40 clicks, and maybe that's enough for a couple new readers. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I hope that answers the question. It, it is worth thinking about. Um, but the, I, the, the, I wouldn't say the budget, the budget and the, the bid are necessarily connected. Okay. So, uh, we'll do, we need to, so everything's the same, except instead of automatic targeting, I chose manual targeting. Okay. Now, custom ad text. I, I like that. We're going to add our book and bidding. We'll keep it dynamic down. And now this, we're gonna do 32 because I just am doing something a little different. Suggested bid is 37. Bid range, eight cents to 11. Eight, eight cents to 111, which that's kind of interesting that this is the same book. And the last one was 44 cents to something really high. And the suggested bid was 80 cents. Yeah, so 80. Hmm. It, it is interesting that there's such a difference. 
But here with it being all the way down to eight cents, this is where earlier I had mentioned, if you're somebody that's new and you don't have a lot of money and you don't have several additional books to get read through, so your margin is thin, you might want to go with 10 cents. Now, at a 10 cent bid, you may not get that many impressions. But if you get a click, it's going to be very inexpensive. And so it, it, it won't be the way to riches, but if you've only got the one book, it doesn't cost you anything to have ads on with a low bid when a click comes through. That just might get you a reader. You never know. And if 10 or 20 of them come through, that probably is going to get you a reader and it didn't cost you anything. Is it as exciting as getting lots of clicks every day? Absolutely not. But if you're new and you only have one book, there's no reason you can't bid really low because what if you happen on a keyword that works for you? So, okay. Now, let's, uh, let's go back to 32. And then we need to enter, um, so it's suggesting a bunch of keywords, which I mean, like mastering Amazon ads. Well, this is because of these are my nonfiction books. So I, I don't want those, um, but it's easier to add all and then go in and remove some. So Henry Wood Detective Agency, it's saying that I need to bid $1.46 to $2.99 for my bid. That's ridiculous. I'm not going to do that. Henry Wood Detective Series doesn't have anything. Um, Henry Wood, it's suggesting 47 cents. The point here is you've got all these suggestions and you don't have to follow them. Brian D. Meeks, it says to bid on my own name is 52 cents. I'm not going to do that. In fact, I'm going to change that to 10 cents because if they're searching on my name, they probably you know, already know uh, what they're doing. Now, Amazon advertising, I don't want that one. Authorship, authorship is a key word that I use for my nonfiction. I don't want that one. AMS ads, I don't want that one. Amazon marketing service, also not. There, Brian Meeks, ads. So you can see what last two years, I've, I've sold a lot of books uh, for the ads. So I'm removing all these. Um, Brian Meeks misspell. We'll, we'll do that at 10 cents as well. Mastering MS ads. Ladies, detective agency. Okay, so this one, I don't know if you've ever read the books. Number, the number two ladies, uh, or the number one ladies detective agency, delightful series. I would love to be, uh, get clicks from people that like that. Underwood Scotch and Rise, one of my books. Put 10 cents on that. Oops. Okay. Um, and so I'm just removing all the ones that are unrelated to anything. And book one, that's with one, no book. See, some of these, when you see ones that are like one wood, there are ones that Amazon will use. Perfect example is book, book, book. If you see that, you want to remove it because that is a junk keyword where they dump things in when people search on something that is either so poorly misspelled or it's just not a keyword that anybody has, they will dump it into book, book, book. So you might get lots and lots of impressions and some clicks from book, 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 but it doesn't necessarily mean it's anyone targeted trying to find your romance novel. I mean, they may not even be looking for romance or your historical military thriller. They may not be looking for that. They could be looking for something entirely different, a blender, and they just happen to still have it on search in Kendall. And for whatever reason, it got dumped into that. So mm -hmm. that's, that's a uh, detective Siri. Uh, that, that's I'm, just do you anyway. do you do any use any uh, type of analytic tools to come up with your keywords yes and let's um, 
Okay, so let's add some keywords and talk about that. So we can enter keywords as well. Now, there's three types, broad, phrase, exact. I'm gonna recommend that when you're starting out, you use broad. You could certainly use the other two. They won't get as many impressions. Um, that's a little more advanced. I think for everybody right now, just broad. So how do you find keywords? The, the tool that I use is Dave Chesson's Rocket tool, Rocket 2.0, which is fantastic. And if you would like, uh, I could share a, a link to it. I, I'll do it after the show. Uh, I'll, and maybe you can put a link on the page yeah. with uh, KDP Rocket. It, I have an affiliate link, so just in the interest of full disclosure, anyone who decides to buy KDP Rocket, I would make a little money, so uh, some people uh, like to know that ahead of time. But the difference between manually finding keywords and using KDP Rocket is the amount of time it saves you. So now I have keyword lists saved in an Excel file. Mm -hmm. But if, if your folks are new, they may want to know how one finds keywords. So let's find some keywords. Let's go. And we're going to, I'm just going to find a handful for this ad just, you know, in the interest of uh, time, because I once spent to build a thousand keyword list. And that's the most keywords you can have in an individual ad. I once spent 10 hours building it from scratch just because I wanted to see how long it would take versus well under an hour using KDP rock. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. Anyway, let's go. Excuse me. Detective Mysteries. So all I did is a search. Excuse me. And let's see here. Okay, I don't know who this is, but let's go to this and let's see what his categories are. So traditional detective mysteries books, traditional detective mysteries in the Kendall store. This is a great source for keywords. So I'm going to click on it. And now we have the top 100 traditional detective mysteries. We also have the top 100 free. These will be different people from the other one. And so if you're new and you don't want to spend a hundred dollars on KDP rocket, here is a source that will get you a bunch of keywords that match up with your book. So let's just take it. Let's take Amelia Price. I'm going to move this over to the side so that I can look at it and still and, the, and then type them in here. So I'm going to put a M E L I A Price as one. I'm going to put Tim another Bo Brennan. Oh, and look at this. Uh, it did autofill for me. So I've got three from the free and I'm going to take three from the, from the top 100 paid. Let's go Louise Penny. And then now there's two things that I typically do. I typically will put these names into KDP rocket and then it returns not just their name. It returns their book titles and it returns similar books, uh, I think it's based on the also bots. So you get, you can get a hundred or so for, you know, maybe Louise Penny. And that's why it's so quick when you use KDP Rocket. But again, for this demonstration, I'm just manually typing in a few. Uh, we'll do this number two one is Bonnie Mac Bird. And you don't have to just use authors. I'm going to put in a better man which is Louise Penny's book, and Unquiet Spirits. I spelled Unquiet incorrectly. Let's do that, Unquiet Spirits. And S-P-I-R-I-T-S, -I -I let's spell that correctly. And this is interesting. Is this, oh, it's a Sherlock Holmes adventure. Okay, so this, uh, that's, there we go. So 
I now have a handful of, oh, we'll do one more on from, we'll do the top three from each. L, T, Ryan, Death of Darkness, L, T, L, T, Ryan. And see what I could do is L, T, and then pick some, I can do L, T, Ryan books. So you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, they're making suggestions, L, T, Ryan, Deadline. Now, what I want to do, and this is important because if you forget this step, well, you can always go back into the ad and, and get them, but the nice thing is if you take those and you have an Excel workbook or, or you know, the, the Google free one, you can just create a blank sheet. There we go. And I'm going to paste my keywords that I just found in here. And so now the next time I do an ad, I can just go copy and paste these. So you always want to build it in a place where it's saved. And then I'll put it at the top here, um, HWDA, so I know what this list was for. And it's going to save you time. So I hope you will remember to save your list once you build it. It says you can add up to 1,000, but this is good enough for the, the example. So we're going to add those. And then we will scroll down and these will be at the bottom. Now, what's interesting is the, the suggested bits. So I'm not gonna raise it to 55 or 48 or 51 or 42, but this one is interesting. There isn't anything suggested. So I'm gonna go low on this one just because it doesn't seem like anyone else is bidding on that. So why not? Test it out. Now, LT Ryan, it says I have to spend 232. Well, that's just crazy. 158 to 466. This, if this is true, it's probably because I don't know, but I'm guessing LT Ryan is a traditionally published book. Let's go and see. I, I don't know this to be true, but I'm going to check and we'll see if this is. Um, I, I, I stand corrected. He, he's not traditionally published, but is currently ranked 575. So there are just a bunch of authors overbidding. So I'm going to leave it at 32 cents. If I never get an impression, that's okay because I don't want to pay 232. Same with LT Ryan Books, but LT Ryan Deadline doesn't have anything. So I'm going to go 10 cents on that and see if I can get some cheap LT Ryan uh, impressions. And that's it. Let's go write some some text. Henry loves a good mystery. Uh, the mob, mom, the mob doesn't like people who meddle in the business. When these worlds collide. Only one person can come out of the other side. And it didn't fit, which is what I was trying to do. You, you are limited to 150 characters on your text. I have gone six over. So when if I take when these out, when we're and add an S, when worlds collide, only one person, and I, I don't, I generally wouldn't use the one, but that was how I adjusted the ad to make sure it fit. Let's go ahead and hit launch. And there, now, do we have any questions at this point? I've thrown a ton at you folks, and I'm hoping that this makes sense. Now, do we have any questions at this point? I've thrown a ton at you folks, and I'm hoping that this makes sense. So Sue would like to know um, if you could explain read through. Absolutely, Sue. Read through is simply, if you've got a series and you get 100 people that buy book one, some percentage of that, it's rare, it would be, well, nigh on impossible 
out of 100 readers for 100 of them to like, to like the book so much that they read through to the second book, meaning they, they got the first book and then they wanted to buy the second book. I have seen read through as low as 30%. Some people, I had a conversation last week with a romance writer who her read through from book one to book two was 95%. That is insanely good. My read through, the Henry Wood Detective Agency, is about 60%. My satire is 70%. And so that's my typical range on read through. Uh, the point being is the more books you have, the more margin you'll have to play with as far as profitability. If you've got five books, well, the thing you want to remember is if a person likes your book enough to buy book two, whether it's 50 out of the 100, or 75 out of the 100, or 20, the people that go to book two, generally 90% of them are now hooked on the series and they will read book three, book four, book five. Mm -hmm. So the most important point is getting them from book one to book two. And that's a whole different lecture. I actually have a lecture on my course about optimizing back matter. The back matter is the, once the book says the end, there's stuff after that. And there are ways to do it correctly to give you the best chance of getting the person from book one to book two. And that's a whole different lecture. And I, I, I don't want to go off topic there, but that's read through. Uh, the, the, did that answer your question? I don't know if she's texting yes. you. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's okay. Good. Very good. Do we have any other questions? Yes. So um, Bill says, can you recap, recap how far between book releases to maintain uh, reader interest? Picture books take ages. Remember, this is a group of children's book authors and picture books are very common with this group. Yes. Well, in this, in this business, you hear a lot about rapid release. If you want to do rapid release, meaning 30, uh, you know, a month apart or less, and, and I wouldn't actually suggest going much less than a month apart. That, that's, that's a whole other suggestion uh, uh, discussion too. But if you want to do rapid release, which has some benefit in that there's a thing called the 30 day cliff. Your book comes out, you've told your people that are your fans, they buy it, it gets some juice on Amazon, you get a little bit of exposure, and then at 30 days that drops off a bit. Well, if book two comes out, then you're getting exposure on that book and people that maybe haven't heard of your series will then go back and buy book one. I remember the, the children's book I bought my niece, well, she's in college now, but she was children's book age. My favorite ever was Click Clack Moo. I loved it, I love cows, and I like typewriters. So Click Clack Moo was a gift I bought her for Christmas. And I know that that author has a lot of uh, books in that series. Mm -hmm. So if you have a fan base and you have books, then, and you can do it every 30 days, that's great. But <laughs> as you pointed out with the illustrations, in order to do that, you may need to pile up three or four books before you even publish book one, which is what I did with Dragon's Fury. Dragon's Fury, I, let me go back to this. Um, well, I don't know where Dragon's Fury went, but. Um, well, there, there's actually a children's book also called Dragon's Fury. Um, there we go. With Dragon's Fury, before, because I'm doing rapid release for 10 books. Mm -hmm. I didn't launch this book until I had written the end on book five. So I planned ahead because I knew that once you get into rapid release, trying to get through the editing and all that is time consuming. And so if the person is, like you said, if you know how long it takes your illustrators, if you know how many pages it's going to be, and you have a feel for the length of time it takes to get the book ready, and you want to do rapid release, well, you may, it may be benefit you to pile up three or four books or six or however many you do in the series. 
Um, I, I, but that's also a really hard thing to do because we want to see our books out there and illustrations cost a lot of money. So maybe that's not even viable. Um, if you can't do it, then just do the best you can. And that's, that's mm -hmm. always my answer is that not everyone can do it rapidly. That's just the way, the way it is. Yeah. So going back now, we just submitted that the ad. Yeah. Um, we talked about the fact that, you know, don't want to touch it for a period of time. Can sure. you revisit? So how long should we leave it alone for? Forever. I, I, I don't ever edit ads. And the reason is it impacts your data. Be I mean, the reason I'm successful is because of my background in data analytics. We know that ads, sometimes they turn on right away. Sometimes they turn on in three days or seven days. Sponsored product ads, usually if they're going to turn on, it will be within a week. But I want you to think, let's say that your ad, you bid 32 cents. And after two days, you panic and you raise the bid to 37 cents. And then on day three, it turns on. And then you come to, you send me a message in chat and mention that. And then I ask the question, did it turn on because three days passed and it was going to turn on on day three at 32 cents? Or was it because you raised it to 37 cents? And you won't be able to answer that question. Mm -hmm. So if you're in there messing with your ads all the time, the assumption is always, oh, I did this thing and it fixed my ad and now they write a Facebook post or this is the secret to success and you'll make a ton of money. But that's not always the case. A woman who has taken my course, she has been part of my Facebook group since, uh, February of 2017 when I started it. She worked really hard because math wasn't her thing. She didn't like the idea of Danny, they, doing analytics, but she liked less the idea of her books just floundering in mediocrity. So she worked really hard and I convinced her that it, you need to constantly be testing new ideas. And once she had done it for a few months, she realized the math wasn't really that hard and she could do it. And so she started to enjoy testing ideas. She would have a theory about something and she would test it and she would do it and it's great. One day she posted in my group that she had tried this crazy thing and it had worked. She was so happy. Well, coincidentally, at that time I was studying Amazon Prime. And Amazon Prime, let's see if I can find it, uh, Prime Reading, Let's go prime reading. Uh, let's go here and see if we can find prime reading. Okay, so this is prime reading. If you get a, an invitation to be a prime reading, I have learned through study of this, this thing that the people who, 12% of the books that are in prime reading at some point will show up on this carousel. So here's recommended for you in prime reading, uh, featured in prime reading, nonfiction in prime reading, books with audible narration in prime reading, magazines in prime reading, mystery and thriller in prime reading. If you have a mystery and thriller and you land on this carousel, you're gonna find that, but let's, let's just click on one of these. This isn't costing them anything, but, uh, this book is number one bestseller, British Human and Satire. Let's go down and look at its overall ranking, 553, which fits with what I learned when I was studying prime reading, is that pretty much all the books in, that land on the carousel will, for the time they're on that carousel, be in the top 600. That's fantastic. When you're ranked that high and you're ranked number one in all these spots, even though you're not making any money from Prime, you don't get paid for it, you don't get anything, if you get on the carousel and it shoots you up the rankings, these rankings will cause organic sales. And that's where the benefit lies. But as I said, after researching this for a couple months, only about one in 12 books land on the carousel. So if I go see more, 
I will then 1 through 16 of 294 results. There are 294 books in prime reading, but the ones that are not on the carousel, which is probably down in here, these will not perform as well. We're gonna click on one and just see what their ranking is. Um, well, this was 793, it's doing pretty well. I'm guessing that is unrelated, or, or maybe it was on the carousel and I just didn't notice it. But the, going back to the story, this woman, because I was studying Amazon Prime and I was looking at all the books, I mean, in, in a couple different genres every day, I was really on top of it. I was watching where they land on, on these pages. And the thing that she did with the Amazon ads, her, her test that was this crazy idea, corresponded with the book landing on the carousel. Oh. And the carousel shot her up the thing. So she mistakenly thought it was this crazy thing she'd done on AMS ads, but it had nothing to do with what she had done. It was that she landed on the carousel. And so you, the point being is you always have to be aware. You should always try to find unique ideas, but if the results are amazing, better than your wildest dreams, you should do a Google search. Did a book blogger on that same day or within the few days happen to mention your book unbeknownst to you? And they have a big audience. There are things that cause huge spikes unrelated to ads. And I just wanted your listeners to be aware that it isn't always the ads. So that, that, that was really long-winded, but um, I, I felt it was important. And I don't even remember the original question if I actually Yeah, so, so I, it. <laughs> the question was how often should we touch the ads and you're saying never. I guess no. the, the one uh, time that I do tend to go in is if I've got manual ads and there's a bunch of different keywords and I see that there's a couple of them that are costing me way too much money, I might turn those off and leave okay, the rest. That, that, that is reasonable. That's okay. That is absolutely reasonable. Um, and so I guess the question is, when you say, well, okay, let, let's, let's discuss that because how are you defining costing you too much money? The cost per click or uh, walk us through what you mean when you're analyzing those keywords and determining that it is costing you too much money. So typically what will happen is I'll have a couple of terms that are, and I've got a broad search on them. Okay. And, so, and then they're getting clicks on things that, you know, aren't exactly the, the phrase that I was, I was looking for. Like um, if all of a sudden children's books, um, I don't know, and then there's another term. So uh, children's books, puppies or something like that. All of a sudden people that are searching for just the word children's books is get, they're getting a ton, I'm getting a ton of of people because I've got a broad term and not not the exact term or the phrase, um, I'll be getting like tons of, of hits on that, but not necessarily a lot a lot of um, you know a lot of conversions on them. So okay. I might well, be spending a lot on on that you know children's books how, term. How okay? So here, here's the question: How how many? See, th th this is this is. This is a problem. If, okay, uh, well, with children's books, it's tough because, am I correct that if you get a KU download, you, because it's so short, you get five, uh, what is it? You get a certain number of pages. Um, how, how does that work with children's books and Kindle Unlimited? Yeah, so you get paid for the page reads and then they, they do a bonus potential. Um, if you're at the top of your category, um, they do award a bonus on a monthly basis for the ones that are at the top of the category. Okay. So, so my question is, if you get, how, how many pages is one of your books? Uh, 32. And 32. 32 typically. And then when the person reads it, do you only get paid for 32 pages? Yes. Okay. Um, the, yeah, and, and that's not much money at all. I mean, that's almost nothing. That's right. Uh, right. I, I just need to use my calculator. Yeah, so the folks like yourself that have hundreds of pages, that makes a big difference. But yeah, absolutely. Book authors, not very much. 
Um, that's, yeah, so that, 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 that's not unreasonable. I, I, are, is everyone listing a children's book author? I think probably the better part of them, yes. Okay. Well, I just wanted to point out that if some of them aren't, or maybe they're children's book authors and they write longer right. fiction as well, mm -hmm. that the problem with analyzing keywords the way that you did is that in if you're exclusive to Amazon and you get a hundred clicks and your AMS report says zero sales. Let, let's, let's, uh, oh, the, that's a really good segue into the question I was going to ask about, you know, what's your process? What's your process of how you analyze? Because that'll help us as we're creating ads and going back in and, and analyzing to know what is good performance? How do we know if, if what we're doing is working and how do we analyze that? Okay, that's a great question. The analyzing individual keywords is in most cases not advised. And the reason is that because the AMS report is slow, meaning that the, I, I've, well, I think, did I close my, um, uh, I think I may have closed it, but the, the report itself, it, oh, it's right in front of me. Oh, here it is. It, it's, it's on the screen. I was looking for this and it was on my screen, but I was looking on a different monitor. Okay, so let's go back to the campaign manager. And uh, so look at these, these ads here. Uh, lots of impressions, 180,000. I spent 1575. It says zero orders. Is that true? No, probably not. Amazon does a horrible job of capturing orders. They are slow to report. They are not accurate. And I can tell you that th in this group here, um, these all probably have orders. Well, except for this under which got to write print. I don't know that it does. Uh, but the it's it's slow. So if you're doing analysis, and your your people will say, oh well, if a keyword has thirty clicks and zero sales, then I kill it. Here's the problem with that. This doesn't count KU readers. Mm -hmm. So if your description is like my mine for Henry Wood or for uh, the Dragon's Fury, did I close that? Maybe I did. Uh, if your description is properly optimized, which is why I wrote Mastering Amazon Descriptions, it will take eight to 10 clicks to get a new reader. Okay. So if you have 30 clicks, how many new sales should you have? Well, it's a trick question because Henry Wood Detective Agency is in Kendall Unlimited. So I could have three new Kendall Unlimited subscribers and nothing will show up on the sales. Right. And that's the problem. You can't analyze keywords because we don't know how many Kendall Unlimited readers there are. The other problem, and this is a key point, and people just ignore it, but statistical variance. And that is simply, and again, if you're looking at Facebook now, stop and pay attention to this. It's important to understand that to properly analyze a keyword, you probably need accurate data, which we don't have. You need to know how many Kindle Unlimited people download it from that keyword, which we do not have and you need a thousand clicks on that keyword, which you do not have. There isn't a scenario where you can properly analyze a keyword and know for sure that you haven't just terminated a great keyword. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. And so again, the way you said it for four of the children's books, the middle grade books, that is not unreasonable. But for me, I don't, I write, you know, fiction, uh, novel length fiction, I simply don't analyze my keywords. Mm -hmm. With the caveat that I'm not picking keywords that aren't relevant. Your keywords need to be relevant. For my Henry Wood Detective Agency, I'm not using keywords like Stephen King. He's more horror. 
or thriller. I might use him for my thriller, but not for my detective. So you do want to start with keywords that are relevant, mm -hmm. but devoting time to analyzing your keywords, there are authors that spend hours and hours a week. Take that time and write more books. So where do you spend your time with analysis? I know that analysis is a, a big part of what you do regularly for yourself. Yes. My focus is on the impressions that are being delivered and the, the impressions being delivered because what I like to look at, so I, I put an ad in and I watch every day how many impressions it gets because my expectations are that it will have a period where it works and then, as I said at the beginning, and then it will die. So I'm keeping an eye on the impressions. I'm keeping an eye on the cost per click because I know that at 30 cents or 32 cents, it's a very profitable click for me. Even if I go nine or 10 or 20 in a row without a click, I know that on average, it takes only eight. And so I'm watching the cost per click, I'm watching the impressions, and when they start to die off, it's time for me to replace the ad. So that's all I focus on. That, well, that's not all I focus on. Once I do that, if I have been doing bidding at a certain level for a, a period of months, I always want to take an opportunity to test a lower bid. And this is something that people don't do. They get lulled into whatever they find their first bid that works and they think that that's the bid they have to use forever. Mm -hmm. A woman who reached out to me back in 2017 was, I think, I, uh, I think she's a, uh, not a mystery, uh, it was mystery or romance, one of the, the large genres. And she was spending $9,000 a month on AMS ads. And she was getting in revenue from her sales, both KU reads and paid sales, $25,000 a month. And I saw her bid and I said, why are you bidding so high? And she said, I have to bid that high to get the ads to turn on. And I said, no, you don't. And she didn't believe me, but I talked her into testing some ads where we dropped the bid by a few cents. And you know what? They turned on just fine. And then we did some more ads and she dropped it lower. With the, the, the following month, once she got down to sort of her new sweet spot, so I guess it would have been 30 days of testing and then she had a full 30 days of, of using the lower bid. She still spent $9,000, but she was spending 20 cents less per click. So she, instead of getting this many clicks, she got this many clicks. And what did that mean? She had $34,000 in revenue on the same $9,000 spend because she found out she had been overbidding. So you always want to be testing. Every few months, you should uh, you know, throw up an ad and just see if it does as well at a lower bid. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. So some of the um, metrics that, you're, that you track, um, you mentioned cost per click. Yes. And um, did you say click-through rate as well? Click-through rate is only mildly interesting. People stress out about click-through rate. It's a measure of if you have really good copy, it can tell you a little bit about your, uh, is your cover effective, but there, there's, I would never take any action based on click-through rate. Now, if you come from the world of Facebook, click-through rate is the most important metric. And this is where a lot of people go wrong. On Facebook, if you get a high click-through rate, it means a lower cost per click. It's a different system on Amazon. You don't need to stress out about your click-through rate. As I said earlier, I've had over 100 million impressions, 600,000 clicks, and I will take the entirety of my ads and do a statistical analysis called Pearson's, and it's called strength of correlation. And you don't need to be have a background in stat. It simply means does a high click-through rate lead to an ad that performs better as far as the amount of impressions that are delivered? The theory being, well, if it gets a high click-through rate, then Amazon's going to love it, and they're going to give you lots more impressions. Okay. I've studied this a dozen times and, and never found a strength of correlation that says click-through rate matters. Okay. So relevance matters. 
if, if you're writing steamy romance and you're using keywords that are goth horror, it's not going to perform very well. But as long as you're starting with relevant keywords, then uh, click-through rate isn't as important and it's not worth freaking out about. I keep an eye on it because sometimes you will write a bit of ad copy that is really good and you want to be aware of that. You'll see a really good click-through rate. I had one piece of copy for my satire, Underwood Scotch and Rye, where the copy was more snark than a snarkopotamus in Snark Town on a snarking spree and that copy crushed it. It had great click-through rate. The, it had a ton of conversions, which normally I don't talk about conversions on an individual ad. I look at a group of ads. If you're gonna run four or five for a single book, I just care about my cost per click and then how the book is doing in general. But on that one ad, it was clear, because I wasn't running other ads, that my conversion rate was great. And for the next 60 days, a book that is typically a 4.3 average got 24 out of 25 reviews were five stars because the Snarkopotamus ad struck a funny bone and the people that bought the book are somebody that would laugh at Snarkopotamus. And so it was perfect for them. So it is worth keeping an eye on it just because maybe you touched a nerve that made people really want the book and you should be aware of that. But I would never kill an ad because of bad, bad CTR. Okay. Um, let me just look at questions here. Um, sure. Would things, would your analysis be different if you're not doing KU? The threshold for, yes. Well, the threshold is different. As an example, I would expect that a book that is in KU would, with proper copywriting would convert it one and eight to one ten to one in 10. If it's not in KU, a good conversion rate might be one in 22, one in 23, because conversions include the Kendall Unlimited folks. So if they're not buying your book because it's not free for them, you won't have as high a conversion rate. And knowing the conversion rate is important when doing analysis, because if you know that your read through, if you put a new reader in, it's worth over your series $12. And you're getting 30 cents per click. If you're in KU and you're converting at one in 10, that's $3 to get 15, that's great. If you're converting at one in 20 because you're not in KU, well, that's $6 and you're still profitable. Conversely, if you only have two books, maybe the value of your series is $4. And at one in 10, you're profitable, but at one in 20, you're not. So you have to understand your read through percentages and uh, to be able to make informed decisions about whether uh, the, the current cost per click is going to work for you. Okay. And how do you? Um, how do you measure or how do you come up with what your conversion rate is? I oh. you go into it in depth in your um, mastering Amazon ads with some of these metrics, but can you touch on that briefly for us. Yeah. Um, let, let me just bring up Excel and we'll just make up some numbers and let me see. There is Excel. Let's do this. We're going to get a blank sheet and we'll make this big so people can see it. So let's do Henderwood Detective Agency. And so the first thing you need are clicks. And let's say, we're just gonna say 200 clicks. Now I wanna stress again, this could be for one ad, this could be for a group of ads. Mm -hmm. But the, the quantity for a time period, and let's say this is one week, okay? Well, here's, okay, well, here's the problem with one week is probably too short. Let's go one month. And let's go 1,000 clicks. Okay, so the reason one week is too short if you're in KU is that people don't have time to finish the book. Now, again, with the books that you folks are producing that might be 30 pages, that's probably not as big a deal. But for me, with Henry Wood Detective Agency, I like to always have a month 
because mm -hmm. the people that came in on the clicks in the first week, they've had plenty of time to get through all the KU page reads. The people that came in in the last week, maybe some of them have, some of them hadn't. So you, you have page reads that come in after the 30 day mark. So analyzing your, your click or not click through rate, your conversion rate is better with a longer period of time. If you've been running ads for a while and you've got three months worth of data, that would be a better, a better sample than one month or three weeks and so forth. So as long as people understand that the, the value of longer time when doing their analysis, that it will give them a more accurate number, that's what's important. You certainly can't do it on a daily basis. Okay, so we've got uh, say a thousand clicks and let's say sales, we've got 30 sales. Then KU page reads, Oh, let's make this a little bigger and add an S. Okay, let's say, uh, um, I'm just making up a number, let's say uh, 34,312, uh, this is just a random number, is the page reads during a 30, uh, 30 months or 30 days. Now, here's where the the math comes in we need to know what the total number of pages a person gets for a complete read so to find that let's go into let me grab another uh, okay so we go here this is your dashboard you go into the bookshelf and if you've never looked up your kenpc number this is where you find it so we'll find henry wood You, you know, it, I, I, know, I know what the answer is. Um, we'll just show you on Dragon's Fury. Um, okay, so uh, Henry Wood, I know, is 303. But to find it, you go to uh, promote. Oh, why is this? Oh, this is interesting. Something. Oh, I just made a change on that book. Um, promote and advertise. There we go. So. You click on promote and advertise and then down here when you scroll down and earn royalties from kdp select global fund so this book is in kdp select so it is available in ku and it says that a touch to die for is 321. i know that henry wood is 303 back on the bookshelf the reason these books don't have that button is because i've launched the epic fantasy series wide because I want to research wide. So none of these have a KENPC number. Now we go back to Excel and we put 303 here, which I know is for Henry Wood, how many pages I get for an entire read. Then when you're doing a formula in Excel, you type equals this number divided by the backslash 303 gets us 113, 241. Now, this is an important concept because accuracy matters. You can't have, you always round up to the next person because you can't have 0.24 of a person. So if 113 people had downloaded this book, well, there wouldn't be 34,312, there would be less because it slightly goes over that. Now, that being said, it is likely there are more than 314 people. So I would take this equals round up. And, and you don't have to actually do this in Excel. I mean, rounding up is pretty simple, but we go there, comma zero. And so we round this number up and the number we want to use in our math is 114. Again, this is the least possible number of people that could have downloaded this book mm -hmm. and obtained this number of page reads. So then we add the two together equals this, which is our sales plus this 144. If we take that equals that divided by the total number of new readers, 
is one in 6.94 clicks to get a new sale. And, and that's, I mean, I, I made these numbers up, but that's pretty close. Henry Wood is one in eight. So this is probably, we'll say 27,000. And that, that, as far as guessing goes, that's pretty good. But here's what's important. Um, notice, excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Um, the point is, of the two metrics, most of the readers came from page reads. Right. And that's important to understand because, well, it's not as important for you folks because you write uh, illustrated books and you probably have many more people who buy it than do it through KU. But you still want to know what the distribution is because I have no idea for middle grade books. Mm -hmm. But I would like to know, is it 80% buy it, 20% KU? When you have that number, it really helps in determining your game plan. So does, does that answer your question as far as how to calculate the conversion rate? Yes. Good. Yep, that's great. Well, what about that's everybody else out there? Any other questions? Really helpful. Um, Bill says, I have a four part picture book series nearly done. I'm using print on demand, so all can be available immediately, but it looks like I should pile up, as you say. Should I re release one book a month, one every three months? The book price is eleven ninety nine. That's a great question. I would release them once a month, and the reason is because of that 30-day drop-off. If you release them all at once, then you're going to get, you're not going to help book one out with the other releases. If you release them every two weeks, you, the books will be out in two months. And then after the last book comes out, you'll have 30 more days before it drops off as far as the, uh, the juice you get from Amazon. So you'll get three months worth of benefit. If you release them every month for four months, the last one will drop off after five months. So five months is 150 days, give or take, versus Every two weeks, you get a hundred and, uh, you know, uh, two, three, or every two weeks, you end up with 90 days. So you get more juice from Amazon. You, you stretch it out. You stretch the benefit out over a longer period of time. So that would be my recommendation. Um, one thing I can think of is this is the time of year we start planning and expecting a spike in sales because of Christmas. Um, do you That's, do anything okay. differently with regard to Christmas coming? Um, well, uh, was it Bob who just asked the question? That That's actually a really good thing to consider because I don't have any experience in the middle grade picture right. books. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what the impact is. I do know Lori Wright, and she teaches a, a course that is specific to your readership. She's had some spectacular Christmases. And so I would maybe change my answer for Bob if I knew what the impact was in general for middle grade authors around Christmas. If, if you sell in a year, 80% like of your books are on Christmas time, then Bob, I would release them. Uh, you know, I would start releasing them in October and and maybe time it so that the last one comes out in near the end of November um, so that, that they're all there so that people can buy all four of them um, so it my, my answer might change if if I had some data about your uh, the, the middle grade and, and, and young children books so mm -hmm. I, I hope I, I hate to say one thing then immediately change my mind but you folks work in a, a very unique industry that needs some unique solutions. Right, right. Now, do you do you do anything different with regard to advertising around that uh, Christmas time of the year? Uh, I it, it gets really expensive. Some some books I turn off. Some I try to accelerate. I last year I well for the last two years I have done only advertising for research. Okay. So what I mean by that is I wanted to study back matter. So when I launched Mastering Amazon Ads, 
I turned off all my ads the day it launched because I wanted my sales to die down. And then when I'm trying these crazy ideas I have, I have clean data that allows me to know that I did this thing A and it either worked or didn't work on my data because I want more accurate research numbers. Mm -hmm. Prior to writing Mastering Amazon ads, I would up my, uh, my spend during November and December because one of the benefits of Amazon having a 60 day delay is the dollars you spend in those two months, you write off on that year's taxes. Whereas the revenue you get from those months shows up on the next year. So in an ideal world, you would, and this would apply to any ad spending, whether it's Amazon, Facebook, blah, blah, whatever. In an ideal world, each year your business would be growing. And so you would get the tax benefit of upping your ads in November and December. And then the next year you would up your ads even more and more. And so you'll have to pay taxes on it eventually. Mm -hmm. But if you're growing, then that write-off saves you real money right now. And in a year you'll do more ad spend and you'll save real money right then. And so I would think for your readership and your type of books that it, it could be, it, it could be very beneficial to up your ad game during, uh, during the holidays. That being said, it is, I mean, we're in September and it could take six months to get really good at ads. Mm -hmm. So I want to set expectations that it may be hard for you to get this sort of dialed in before the holidays. And what I don't want to see people do is lose money on their ads, you know, right. ramp it up because they think they should be ramping it up and, and, and not have a profit. Right. Um, I think for me, I don't see any other questions out there, so I'll ask one of my own. Uh, sure. For me, when I'm, I create new ads, um, I think the biggest frustration on my side is putting an ad out there, and I'll even put a $100 a day budget just to say, Amazon, I'm serious, um, and they won't spend, it, it, it just, you know, they spend a very, very, very small portion of what I'm putting out there. Like, is there a trick to getting no. them to spend the money. There, there isn't a trick. You, if the ad didn't work at that bid, you need to raise, you need to raise the bid. But I, I, again, I wouldn't go in and edit that ad. I would kill it, write a new ad and raise the bid. The, you may get to a point where if you know these metrics that we've talked about, if you know your read through, if you know the revenue that you're generating, you may get to a point where uh, I I can't make money bidding any higher, in which case the answer is not to do it. Sometimes that's the best decision. Mm -hmm. As I said at the beginning, I've been researching Facebook ads, and in my course, I'm going to talk about that uh, this week, where I've found some interesting things, ways that Facebook behaves a bit differently than I would have expected, and so I'm doing my research with this wide series using Facebook ads. And the, the advantage of that is that if I'm not running an ad to Canada targeting Kobo readers, then I get zero sales on Kobo. If I am running an ad on Facebook to Canada, to Canadians who like Kobo, then I get sales. So I know that my data is good and I can tell what my conversion rate and I see the impact of price changes. And so I'm getting a lot of valuable information about using Facebook ads and comparing the cost per click factoring in the, the conversion rate. So it may be better to shift to Facebook ads. But again, I mean, that's a whole different, different ball game. And I'm not suggesting, uh, you know, your folks try to master all the different ad types. I'm just saying that if you get to a point where you're not advertising profitably, then don't do it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've actually even said, okay, maybe it's the bid price. I'll raise it. I'll take this same ad, create a new one. And this time I'll leave the bid at 75 cents. If it's really the bid price and it, that's why it's not taking off, then that should do it. 
And even, okay, that, here, here's and my even question. that ad did nothing. Okay, so um, the did you did you copy the ad or did you write a new ad? No, I, I wrote a new one. Okay, and what was the old bid before uh, the seventy five cents? Uh, Thirty two. Yes, yeah, see, I mean that that that's the reason that things are so high because you should have gone to thirty four, mm -hmm. but what you did is what everybody's doing. Yeah. So because of the fact that there are literally thousands and thousands of authors who aren't trying to find the optimal bid, everyone is going with the suggested bid and now it's 75 cents and the, the, there are very few authors that are actually doing it profitably. So, so don't do that. I mean, yeah. I said at the beginning that it's okay to have an ad that does very little if you're getting reasonable clicks, but do you really make a profit at 75 cents? I was just so frustrated. I wanted to see Amazon take off. I was trying to more figure out what is it that I need to get um, ads to perform. And so I was more interested in the experiment versus sure. the profitability at that point. But no, probably not. Yeah. And, and so the, the, I mean, that's, that's why they're not taking off because there's thousands of people doing that. Yeah. And so um, they're all been because they're, it's suggested 75 cents. So Amazon's making a killing. Yeah, I, I, I don't bid 75 cents. So, uh, you know, um, the other um, metric that we see in, in these ads is the ACOS. Um, and everybody's focusing on, oh, I have to lower my ACOS. I need to lower that. And that's not a metric that you really worry about, right? Well, it's a metric that I tell people don't use. It, it is absolutely horrible for the same reason that you can't do analysis on keywords. The ACOS doesn't factor in KU page reads. So if ACOS was an accurate metric that captured all the sales, it does not, the, and the KU page read revenue, which it doesn't do, then you could use it as a guide mm -hmm. and you would want to be below 70%. But I've had ads where the ACOS was 1500%. And I didn't care because I don't look at that because I know it's, it's a worthless metric. So if, now that being said, if you have an ad that says an ACOS of 32%, well, that's fine. I mean, it, it's when Amazon does report the sales, if you're getting a lot of conversions and it's a low ACS, ACOS number, that's fine. That just says, oh, good job. It's, it's confirmation that it's great. Mm -hmm. But if you turn off an ad that's 120% because you think it's losing money, it, it, it's, it's you may be turning off a great ad. You may turn it off and then two weeks later look and see that the ACOS dropped. And that was because more sales came in, but it still didn't factor in the, the page reads, which again, for, for you folks is, is different, but it's a really bad metric. And uh, a lot of people make bad decisions because they look at it. And I know that that's what everybody says to do, but right. they, they're not listening to, uh, they're, they're not using logic when they make that decision. So. so tell us more about this class of yours. Okay, well, I, I honestly, it's, I love my class. It is fantastic. It, it, it focuses on the skills that one needs to do well in this business. So it, it's my, and I use air quotes, AMS class, but the talking about AMS is, not so much, well, it, it's none of the basics. I, I don't even tell people how to set up an ad because I assume that if you're taking the course, you've already read my book and you know how to put in an ad. It's about doing analysis. It's about understanding and answering questions. What if I have a long series and I have first book in the series free? Can I advertise a free book and do it profitably? And I have an entire lecture on a test I did with a gentleman with an eight book series. And in order to do the analysis, this was some high level analysis. This, was, this wasn't the fifth grade math. I needed to use a 21 day moving average. It was incredibly complex, but I broke it down into, I think reasonable images, graph images stuff. So people could understand what you need to look at if you're gonna try that test first book free and watch read through and how long it takes because it took uh, 
45 days to really be to a point where I was confident that our test had worked. And so I talk about description writing. I mean, I wrote a whole book about mastering Amazon description. I talk about back matter. I'm now adding to the course Facebook ads. And, and the Facebook ads will be starting off from the basics because I haven't written a book on Facebook ads, so I, I don't have any expectation that people have read that. But it's, it's a high level stuff where learning the art of copywriting, understanding how to think like an analyst so you don't make decisions that cost you money or, or worse, decisions that kill something that was making you a ton of money. And so that's what the course goes into. And right now, actually, I'm running a, a, a special because I spoke in Houston last week. So if anybody wants to, uh, and, and I, I, again, uh, this, this is the course. It's on, you go to www.teachable.com and uh, you can just do a, oh, let me see. Well, how do I do a search? You think I would know. Uh, well, I think this is because, let's go Meeks Master. It's called Meeks Master Class. Now that's, uh, see, th this is because it's, well, hold up. I will, let me just log in here and, uh, okay, so if, uh, where's the sales page? I, I'm doing a terrible job of pages and sales page. You'd think I would know how to, it's called me, okay, there, how do I view it? I am so, unpre I was so unprepared for this question. And I'm so sorry. That, 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 that's all right. It's, <laughs> it's all teachable. I just, the more you talk about your class, the more I feel like I really want and need it, so. Well, the, the, the course right now is on sale for 30% off and there's a, a, I just want to show you, I like my sales page. Oh, there it is, as a visitor. That's the button I was looking for. So Meeks Masterclass, an author's guide, and new for 2019, two new lectures coming in September on Facebook ads. It might, it will likely turn out to be more than two, but I already know what I'm going to speak about for the first two, first mm -hmm. one coming up uh, tomorrow night. And so the, the code to save 30% is Houston because I just spoke in Houston a okay. couple days ago. And so since that sale is on, your folks can do that. I will leave that code up, uh, well, probably for a long while, just because I don't know, you said some of your readers will watch it on recording. So I, yeah. I won't turn off the Houston code. So if somebody sees it a month from now, it'll still be fine. But the important part of this course is that I am focused on trying to teach people analytics and the way to think about doing things. I've got some tools in there that uh, are designed for just doing sort of what if analysis for, for watching things when you make changes early on. Like this is, this is, this tool is, is like you start an ad and you, you, or a group of ads and you watch your data every day and you can just type in some numbers in here and get a feel for how it's doing, which brings me to another point in analysis. And that's, keep in mind that the analysis is always pass fail. If you're looking at your numbers and you think you're getting an ROI of a return on investment of 50%, well, that's fine. Is it as good as 82%? No, but it's a positive ROI. So you should keep doing that thing until such a time as you find another method of advertising that outperforms it. And then you ask the question, can I spend my budget on the other thing that is now 95% return on investment? Can I spend, say you're, you, you're new and you have $100 a month to spend and you're spending $100 at a 50% return on investment. That means you spend $100 and you generate $150 in sales. So you're, you're $50 to the good. But then you find this other thing and you're spending $100 
and you're getting 195 back, well, that's better. Mm -hmm. But what if the other thing, you're unable to spend as much money as you would like? As in your example, you were struggling with that ad that you were running, it wouldn't spend your money. So if you can't spend all of your budget on the higher ROI, then you spend what you can, maybe $10, mm -hmm. but you spend the other 90 on the lower ROI because both of them mean you get more money back at the end, at the end of the day. And so that's, that's how to think like an analyst. That's the sort of thing that I talk about here. In fact, I'm going to be adding a new tool. Uh, so here, th this, this file called August 11th through August 19th, I built something called a what if tool. And this is to help people who don't, maybe they haven't launched their book yet. Or like Bob, I think he said he had four books saved up. Mm -hmm. And so he doesn't have a read through number. He doesn't have any data to make reasonable decisions. Right. I was in the same boat with my epic fantasy series because I had zero readers on my list. It's a brand new genre for me. I'm going wide. So I created this calculator to do what if analysis. Now, I know now because I have a little data that I convert at one in 10, which is 10%. So I put in my conversion rate here. I run different ads and they have different costs per click. Now these numbers, the, the spend, this is just, it, it, it's for period of time X, which could be a month, it could be a day, it could be a year. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You just need to put in a number. So let's say $1,000 for a month. If you were getting 30 cent clicks and your conversion rate was one in 10 and you were spending $1,000 in a month, that would be 3,333 clicks. If you were getting 25 cent clicks, it would mean 4,000. So this is not real results, it's what if data. Now, I ran a test recently where I, because I put the book down to 99 cents because I wanted to test if that converted better on Facebook ads than a 499 book. And this is one of the things I'm gonna discuss Wednesday night. So my, my revenue from the first book is only 34 cents, which means that even though if I assume, so the, this is your read through. We talked about read through. Got it. You need to put in numbers here. And if you've never published anything, you don't know what these numbers would be. I have published enough fiction that I know worst case scenario, I'm going to get 50% read through. Mm -hmm. I might get 70% and we'll change that number in a moment. And then after that, probably 90% the rest of the way. Well, note, if I get one in 10 on 4,000 clicks, I get 400 sales. But that means that out to book 10, which will come out in March, I'm only getting 84 people because 90% each time it drops a little bit. Maybe if I change this to 98%, I add that in here, then that changes and it jumps to 152. So it allows you to be conservative or, uh, or uh, you know, looking at what if I do this, what if I do that? Well, here, with a 10 book series that I haven't released, knowing what I know about my historical performance of other books that I've written, I can put in these numbers and find out that at 25 cents cost per click, which actually happened in my test in both Canada and Australia at a conversion rate of one in 10, that when the read through starts to happen to book two at 50%, I'm still losing money. But when they start to get to book three, I'm at 45% ROI. When they get all the way out to book 10, I'm at 33%. And this illustrates how valuable having more books in the series would be. It right. also shows the value in back matter because if I do my back matter and have it optimized, and let's say that right now, today, it's 50% read through. And this is the number we wanna keep an eye on when we're doing our what if. People don't understand the value, how important back matter is. If, and again, I have a whole lecture on this in my course. If I get my back matter from 50% 50 to 
Look what that does to the ROI, 333 to 417. Wow. It, it, every point, I mean, even just 1.61. That, I mean, that just every little point you can do it. So maybe just changing one little thing in your back matter can mean a lot of extra profit. And, and that's a low time cost change compared to changing a cover. You know, you can change a back matter in 20 yeah, minutes. I've heard you reference the, the term back matter, and that's something that um, I don't understand. And Bill also asked, can you provide yes. a quick recap? And then we're, we're just about at the top of the 10 p.m. Sorry, oh, I, I, I used all no, your No, I, I am so grateful that you have spent two hours with us. I am just floored. Um, well, you have such a busy schedule, and you have been so gracious with us. So I'm just wondering if you might answer that last question and then yes. we'll, we'll let folks go and uh, we'll follow up on, on additional ads and, I mean, um, uh, courses and things like that. I can't wait to check it out and see if I can jump on soon. Okay, sounds great. And uh, just one thing on the course really quickly. People, the question they ask, the two questions they always ask is, is it's, you know, it's a lifetime membership. So the people that bought the course back in 2017 that are in it, they're getting the new stuff that I'm adding for Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so if you sign up, yes, you get the course, but as I add anything else to the course, you're gonna be a member forever, you know, as, as long as you, uh, you know, paid for it. The second question is, am I available for help? Yes, I, I try to help people out if they have questions. I love this stuff. So those two questions are pretty common. Now, as far as back matter, that is, and honestly, I don't know what back matter is for middle grade books, but the idea is when you get to the end of the book and it says the end, the next page has something maybe about the author, maybe it has a preview of the next book, maybe it has a list of other books by that author. There are lots of things that can be in back matter Got and it. I studied it and kind of came up with a plan that helped improve the back matter, meaning moving the conversion, the, the read through rate up. And so that's what that lecture talks about. So it's the stuff after the end. Got it. Bill says, Brian's enthusiasm is tops. Everybody's saying thank you. <laughs> we well, we appreciate your time so much and got so much out of it. So um, this is going to be one that I'm going to be reviewing on and pausing and doing some things and going and reviewing some more and pausing and taking more notes. So thank you so much for allowing us to record this. I really appreciate your time. Thank you everyone for joining us. And for those that are, um, that are replying or watching this, um, don't forget if you are looking to get into Brian's ads, um, the Coop, the code to use, I mean, sorry, the Brian's class, the code to use is Houston and you will get the 30% off. Thank and you for that. Can, can I say one more thing? Absolutely. The, the, if, I mean, the class is expensive, even with the 30% off, it's still like $343, but now there is a payment plan, but that's not what I wanted to say. If somebody out there isn't ready for the class and you may not be the, the one recommendation I can make that will benefit you the most is my book mastering amazon descriptions about the art of copywriting because copywriting you use not just for your description you use it for your newsletter you use it for interaction with fans if you can that's the best ten dollars you can spend as far as if you're interested in learning more about the stuff that i've done is start with the mastering amazon descriptions and if you already have read that or are ready for the course then go that route but uh I wanted to make a plug for that book. Because yeah, it absolutely. Does help and and the Mastering Amazon Ads is, is phenomenal as well. I do have to admit my eyes glazed over a little bit as we got into some of the analytics. So I'll do better <laughs> when I go back through it um, now that I know a lot more about it. So thank you, Brian. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Good night.